Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about the high heel hacks that every girl needs to know. If you watch my channel regularly, you will know how much I love wearing high heels, but what I don't love is the pain associated with wearing high heels. So today I thought I would round up all of my favorite tips and hacks as to how to make wearing high heels a lot more comfortable and manageable. These are all tried and tested tips, so all things I actually use, rather than just random hacks which aren't very practical. So I hope you guys enjoy this and find it useful and let's get started. So my first tip is a lubrication stick, which sounds like the weirdest thing in the world and I was super skeptical when I first heard about it. These are honestly a game changer. So this one is from Dr. Scholz, is that how you say it? I've never known. Um, but this is called the Blister Defense Anti-Friction Stick and this is such a genius product. So basically, it's just a lubrication stick, which you just glide onto the troubled areas, especially if you know you have a pair of shoes. And this doesn't just work for high heels, it works for flats as well, where you know you have a troubled area. So if that's around the ankle, or if it's around kind of the little toe, you just glide this on, and it basically stops you from getting a blister. So it's exactly what it says, but it works so amazingly well. This isn't available everywhere, so I think these are available in the US. In the UK, they stopped selling these. Um, I will try and find a alternative that works as well. I'll list everything down below in the description section, but if you want something that's going to help you with blisters or just general rubbing and uncomfortable shoes, this is absolutely amazing. I just pop it in my handbag if I know I'm going out and I have an uncomfortable pair of shoes, and if I ever need a top up, I just glide this on and it sorts it right out. My next tip is kind of along the same lines, but it's using lotion to, again, lubricate the whole foot. Now this really only works if you have very, very tight fitting heels, or otherwise if you have a lower heel, a block heel, or otherwise a flat shoe. I would not recommend this for high heels which are stilettos or are a bit loose or anything like that, because what the lotion does is it basically makes your whole foot a lot more slippery, but when it comes to uncomfortable tight fitting shoes, that can really help make all the difference in terms of comfort but if the shoe is a little bit too high or if your foot is at a really really high slant it's gonna mean that your foot is much more prone to slipping out which can be a massive trip hazard so definitely don't do this with super high stilettos that are a little bit loose or anything like that I really only do this for very tight fitting shoes or if I have a very well fitting shoe that's tight in just a particular place and I don't want to use the Dr. Scholl stick I will just put lotion over my toes or the troubled area and it really does help and this is also very very helpful for difficult flats when you're trying to break them in lotion up your whole foot and it will make such a big difference I particularly like using a really thick cream for this you can use a lotion but often lotions will really absorb very quickly into the foot which means that the effects don't last very long so if you use a very thick cream it means that your foot will be moisturized and be comfortable for a lot longer I really like the Jo Malone cream because it is so thick and so it really kind of stays on your foot for a lot longer any thick cream will do though you can get some just you know, from the drugstore or high street stores, super drug boots, that sort of thing. And the thicker the cream, the longer it will last and the more comfortable your foot will feel. My next tip are gel pads. I am a huge fan of gel pads and it doesn't really matter how comfortable I find the high heel. I will very, very rarely ever wear a pair of heeled shoes without putting a gel pad inside because I just think it helps make them so much more comfortable. But as I've learned over the years, not all gel pads are created equal. So my favorite ones are, and I have two. So I have one here, which is the Shoal ones. I really need to look up how to say that. The Gel Active Extreme High Heel versions. And these are a little bit different. So I'm gonna open these up and show you so basically the difference with these are that usually a gel pad will kind of just be that shape but these ones have a much longer bit and these are fantastic because it just helps kind of elongate the cushion area but it's also an even so it gives you extra cushioning in the places where you need it most and what I love to do with these is I like to position them in different places according to the weak spots of that shoe. So if I know that a shoe runs a little bit more narrow, I will put it right up against the kind of corner bit right here so it cushions the edge. If I know that it's a really high arch, I'll position it a little bit differently there. So don't feel like you need to put these in the same spot every time. Move it around according to kind of the requirements of that particular shoe and it'll end up being a much more comfortable fit. So 
I absolutely love these. They're definitely a bit more expensive. These are £15, I think, but these are well worth the money. I have several of these and they make such a huge difference. My other favourites are this pair right here, and this is a bit more of an unknown brand. I think these are called Vivian something. I will look up the name and I'll put it on screen and I'll also link them below. When I first tried these, I didn't think they worked at all and I actually, someone asked me about them and I was like, I don't like them, like I don't recommend them. But I then tried wearing these shoes without this and I couldn't believe the difference. There was such a massive difference and change. So I have been fully converted to these and these are a little bit different in that they sit along here rather than right at these soles. And I don't know what kind of witchcraft it is, but it really does help make the shoe so much more comfortable. These aren't super widely available, um, so again, I'll link the direct place to get them. I think they were around the £20 mark, but I think that could have been for two, so it wasn't too much. If you have a really uncomfortable pair of shoes, you can always double up and put a gel pad in the bottom as well as here but these are so great. So between these ones and my kind of fancy gel pad ones, I'm all set, they make such a big difference and I love them both. I also wanted to quickly mention a sizing as well. If you're in between shoe sizes, then I would always say to size up rather than down. These are obviously very thin, but they still do add something. So if you already have a tight fitting shoe and then you add these as well, it's just going to make for a much more uncomfortable experience. So if you're in between sizes and debating whether to go up or down, I would always say to go up. Your feet do tend to swell anyway, so it's always a good idea, but especially if you're planning on adding gel soles, always size up for a more comfortable fit. Next up is the sock trick. Now this is a pretty famous tip and all it is is you gradually break your shoes in and you make them a bit more comfortable and you enable them to mold your feet by wearing socks to make sure that your feet kind of volume is a little bit bigger and stretch out your shoe along the way. But what's really important to keep in mind is you need to kind of graduate to different sock widths if that makes sense. So what I would never recommend is going straight in for the super woolly socks because that's just going to be super uncomfortable and if you're anything like me you'll just give up because no one wants to be in pain so I always start off with really really thin socks these are super thin and flimsy and then I'll go up to what I call bed socks I get these from Kath Kitson or rather Dan buys them for me for Christmas um, and they're just a slightly thicker sock and they do have you know a fairly thick sole but nothing too crazy and if you build your way up or work your way up then it's going to ensure that you're not in a lot of pain but you do enable your shoe to stretch as well Coupled with this is shoe stretching spray. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that you can blow dry your shoe at the same time as wearing socks and that will stretch it out. I've personally never found that to work, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I didn't really like that tip. What I have found to work is shoe stretching spray though. So you can use this in combination with the socks or you can just use it kind of wearing your shoes out and about. I've done both and both work, but essentially all you do is you spray the shoe stretching spray on the shoe in question, especially around the tight areas. You do have to be quite generous with the spray though, but as you wear the shoe, it will basically stretch the leather out and make sure that it molds to your foot. Obviously, if you do it with socks as well, it's going to speed up that process. But as I mentioned, you can just do this before you wear shoes and then it'll stretch out as you wear them. One super important thing to remember though is to always do a patch test either on an inconspicuous part of the shoe or otherwise on a cheaper shoe just to make sure it's okay on that kind of material. I definitely don't want to be responsible for anyone ruining their shoes. So whenever I have a fancy pair of shoes that I want to try out, I try and find a similar shoe which is much cheaper or, you know, a bit of fabric fabric just to spray on just to make sure it's not going to ruin it and then I go on to the fanciest shoe if that's what I'm going for. Next up is a very random but very very effective tip and it's also super cheap as well. I read about this one online recently and I didn't believe that it worked but then I tried it out and I was so amazed and surprised. So basically all it is is sticky tape and you tape two of your toes together. I don't know the different names of the different toes so I'm not going to try and explain which ones. I'm just going to show you but you tape two of your toes together and somehow it really does help distribute the weight of your heels and your foot and it just makes everything a lot more comfortable. Again, I literally have no idea why or how this works, but it is so, so good and it's super cheap. You know, everyone has sticky tape around the house, so just tape your toes together and prepare to be amazed. It really is a game-changing tip. 
And finally, for my last tip, I wanted to mention gel heel liners. These are so great and they're good for a couple of different situations. So if your shoe is a little bit on the large side, then these are really great and making sure that your shoes fit a little bit better but they're also good even if your shoe isn't too big but it just has a bit of a funny fit or if your shoe can slip down a little bit. These are really good at helping secure your shoe and it's often the instability that can make a high heel quite uncomfortable. If you're constantly having to tense your foot to make sure that your heel stays on, it's not going to be a very comfortable experience but if you add a gel liner, it can make a big difference in making sure that your foot feels very secure and very stable which will enable you to walk a lot easier as well. So. These are great even if you don't feel like you need them. I would definitely say to give them a try, probably on a cheaper shoe because once you put these on, it's extremely difficult to get them off and it does leave a residue. So when I put these on and I do put them on my expensive shoes, I just leave them there. You know, I don't put them on with the intention of taking them off. So that is something to keep in mind. But if you're unsure about them, I'd say give them a go, try them on a cheaper pair of shoes and feel the difference as to how much more secure your foot can feel. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any hacks or tips of your own down below. I am always up for hearing new good ones. If you like the video, please do give this a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. I would love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next one. Bye.